This is incredible. I'm cool. Hey, you kids, let's get down. Get funky. How do you do, fellow kids? Love listening to you on my way into work. And, uh... All right, we get the point. We're more worried about breakfast right now, okay? Oh, oh, fans are delirious. Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. Channel 90. Get it all over yourself, boys and girls. Here you go. Now, the morning drive with Mike Bagley and Pete Pistone. <laughs> Sirius XM NASCAR Radio Channel 90 live and on the air for this Thursday morning, January 19th, 2023. Mike Bagley here at the Worldwide Headquarters of the Motor Racing Network and Racing Electronics in Concord, North Carolina. We've got Pistol Pete Pistoni in the Paisan Palace in Chicago. We've got Sammy, Davey, and Henry in Studio 134, the Beltway Bureau in our nation's capital. We welcome each and every one of you to this Thursday morning. And happy Friday Eve to you, Triple P. Well, good morning, Bagman. Good morning, everybody. Happy Friday Eve to one and all. It is a Thursday morning. We're closer to the weekend than, well, we're closer to this year's NASCAR Hall of Fame ceremony down there in Charlotte tomorrow night. We're ready to roll, man. I'm telling you. Everybody's all pumped up. Yesterday was day two and the final day of media production days. Yes. And I had uh, bumped into a couple <laughs> of drivers. You see? And, you know, everybody's happy, right? Oh, sure. New Year's in the books, transitioning in. Everybody is full of a lot of positive energy. I told a couple of them, I'm like, can we bottle this, and can I come revisit this when we get to Michigan? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> August. In the summer. Yeah. Can we, can we, when we get to Daytona in August, can we just tap into some of this? Uh, some of, and they're like, ha, ha, ha. I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> ha, ha, ha. Sure. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> right. Uh -huh. Well, that's good. It's, it's different. Fun time. This is not, and, and you know, I think some people, you explained it a couple of times, this is not per se like the old media tour. No. This is not like the beat no. writers and those kinds of things. This is sort of more, well, I guess the way to say it, Mike, behind the scenes stuff for television and radio, and that's what the last right. few days have been. Yeah. And it's also uh, taking pictures, doing headshots. Um, like when you see some of the headshots you'll see on TV or in print, uh, all those are being done. Xfinity and truck drivers are involved in this as well. They go later in the day. Um, and we're, I need those pictures. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so this is where you're in a much, it's much easier to do this in this relaxed environment in downtown or uptown over there in whatever that Charlotte thing is. Charlotte. Charlotte. It's Charlotte. 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 Because people are starting to say downtown. It's like they used to be real militant about the uptown reference, but now yeah. you're downtown. I don't know. Really? I don't know. Yes, I don't know what we're doing. Okay, look, they don't have a song called Uptown. When you're alone and life is making you lonely, you can always go downtown. That's what I prefer. Uptown but, funk you up. No. But see, Mar Mar you're right. Mark Ronson. No. And Bruno. Yeah, but Charlotte was always weird. You're right. Whenever the, the NASCAR, when the NASCAR Hall of Fame was built, we went through this, like in person. We would say we're in downtown Charlotte. No, you're not. You're in uptown no, you're Charlotte. Not, you're, you're in uptown. Okay. It's, it's like Philly. It's not Whatever. downtown Philadelphia. It's Center City. Yeah, okay. I don't care where I am. corner of 5th and Walnut. Well, as I said, when I was at the Hall of Fame, I don't care where I am. Who validates this parking? Uh, hang on, that, hang that's on. That's all I cared about. I literally Googled this. on the. It says, Charlotte City Council in 1974 made an official proclamation to formerly name Charlotte's business district Uptown. Okay. This designation was meant to honor the neighborhood's historical name while also presenting a more upbeat and upscale identity to draw more people to live, work, and play in the city center district. This is from UptownCharlotte.com. So it okay. makes hmm. sense. That's headline, well, Uptown they... versus Downtown. It's more complicated than you think. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So where it where does like the it. business district start and end, and right. where does the Uptown label start? And by the way, Upscale, um, I happen to, like, just, I was curious, right? like, what's the real estate situation down here? So I had a little few moments yesterday, so I pulled up an app, and I'm looking at places in Uptown. Yeah. Okay, y'all have lost your minds. It's Crazy. like, are, ser seriously? Mm-hmm. I don't need a 2-2, 1,085 square feet for five grand a month. Good what? grief. Five grand a month? Yes. What is the, real quick. What are you quick, doing down there? You said you pulled up the real estate app. What is your, because there's like a million of them. I'm just curious. Zillow. Back, you, Zillow's Zillow is what I use. What do you use, Maggie? I use Zillow. Realtor.com. That's what I use. I use Realtor, yep. too. What's the difference? Realtor.com. I'm just curious. Zillow. What is the difference? I'm just um, curious. Zillow, I, I used to use Zillow quite a bit, and I used Trulia as well. Um, mm -hmm. But both of them, I'd get notifications from Zillow that I didn't want, and there's, I think Realtor was just a better layout, and I like that their, I like their map. Their map was a little more user-friendly, in my opinion, than Zillow was it. They right. have more, it's more descriptive, and to me, I have more, I don't want to say faith in that, but I know that Realtor, 
tw- like true realtors tap into that rather than like guys that are trying to sell their own stuff can just throw what a- anybody can throw anything on Zillow. It's like you kind of have to be a realtor to go realtor.com. I mean, I that's in my mind. That's how mm-hmm. I'm processing it. So I go there. Okay. I'll, I'll also do like apartments.com um, with uh, what's his name? Uh, Goldblum. Uh, yeah. yeah. Jeff Goldblum. Yeah. yeah. And so they have like houses and townhouses, all that. But every now and then I'll be in a place where like, I wonder, I'm curious about I love like doing that. What's the real estate market like in this area? Like, yeah. What are they doing? Mm-hmm. Well, they're doing a lot down there in uptown, downtown Charlotte. Mm hmm. Over there, down there. Merry go round. I just a little compare and contrast on a certain property from Realtor.com to Zillow.com. I like Realtor.com much better. Thank you very much. That's Price really is good. a lot better over there. A little better on the Realtor.com side. Well, of you things. know, Pete, that's just an estimate. <laughs> yes, I understand. You know, it's funny, the uptown, downtown thing. My dad, when we would talk Chicago, it would always sort of bug him, too. He was very militant. He would say, when Michelle was in sales, where were you today? Where'd you go, Michelle? Where were you? Oh, I was over on uh, Waveland and Grace around Wrigleyville, you know, downtown. That's not downtown. Well, it's in the city. Well, that's not downtown. Well, what's downtown? I don't know. I mean, I mean, who cares? I wasn't in the suburbs. I'm in the city, so I'm downtown. That's kind of how I look at it. I don't know. I don't know either. It was, great. It was fun. Great. It was great kitchen table talk, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah. So Media Days is done, uh, and then now there's a lot of people that I've spoken with that some of them are getting in their cars and driving to Daytona for the Roar this weekend. Really? Yeah. They're going to come back, and then they're going to drive down next week because the Rolex is next weekend. So you've got a lot of people, even though we're in NASCAR, mm-hmm. but there are a lot of folks that are intermingling with IMSA teams, yeah. whether they be like spotting, working on teams or whatever, that instead of getting on the airplane and flying, they're going to hop in the car and drive down to uh, Daytona next weekend. Bumped into Frank Kelleher. Track is buttoned up, ready to go. We announced the 500 is a sellout for the stadium seating and the camping. He's pumped up. They're ready to go. Track is all buttoned up. Everything is ready for action there. Uh, bumped into a lot of people this week. Had had a lot of good conversation. And, of course, we'll have more because tomorrow night we're going to reconvene in the ballroom for the NASCAR Hall of Fame induction ceremony. And I can't wait to, uh, I can't wait to be a part of that. That's going to be a blast. That's going to be fun. I've only done one other uh, induction. I think I did the induction where Jack Roush went in. Um, mm. But everybody sits down. We have uh, dinner. And then we go on the air. And then we induct what will be three people into the Hall of Fame, plus acknowledge Mike Helton with the Landmark Award tomorrow night as well. Yeah, and you'll hear that right here on Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. I was doing some sort of schedule, not travel schedule stuff, but for the next few weeks, to your point, really and truly, between, and we've said this several times, between what you said with the Roar, if you're a short track fan, there's a super late model race this weekend out at Irwindale Speedway. There's one next week. We talked about this yesterday at Cordial, Georgia. There's a super late model race there with the Rolex 24. And then the clash is the weekend after that. There's racing. There was actually racing, Mike, dirt late models at Volusia County Speedway uh, in mm-hmm. Daytona last night. So, you know, it's here. I mean, if you're a race fan, you can find it. And uh, before too long, NASCAR will be on track out there at the Coliseum. Well, see, this is where January for me is unique. So you mentioned the, the racing element to this. Well, there's also a professional football element to this as well. We come back, we get the divisional games yeah. and the roar. The following weekend is when we get the Rolex and the NFC Con- or AFC Conference games, Clash, and then Super Bowl. So we're like, we have these sporting events on the weekends to get us through. Patches, we're dependent on your son. <laughs> it's a lot of He's discussion. programming to get us through. A lot of discussion. You're talking about uh, the the Rolex 24 and the international flavor to that. Uh, in other sports, the Bulls are in Paris today playing a basketball game, which obviously will be oui, oui. in the evening in Paris, but it'll be this afternoon, which I found a little bit odd on a Thursday. The NFL just announced what teams are going to play the international games next year, Buffalo, Tennessee, Jacksonville, Kansas City, and New England. So exporting you know, United States professional sports continues on, and you got to wonder at what point will NASCAR do that, at, you know, maybe in a, in a college. Well, just setting. be sure to give us those TV numbers for that 2 o'clock Thursday afternoon game while everybody's working. I, I, I mean, that's weird. I mean, it's it's – I could see, I get it, while they're there. Some really cool pictures, too. The Bulls are in front of the Eiffel Tower and those kinds of things. But why wouldn't you do that on a Saturday so at least those of us who are not in Paris can watch the game instead of on a Thursday afternoon today at 2? Because, as we said, we brought up the, the dual races. 
most people work or at school during the day. Why would you have a mid-afternoon game? But it's, it's kind of cool that they're over there. Now, anyway. do you yearn for a mid-afternoon Thursday basketball game like you do for mid-afternoon qualifying races? No, because I, I, I didn't experience it. You know, I think the mid-afternoon qualifying races was so traditional, you know, and then it went away. I think that's why I miss it. I like, again, it. mid-afternoon basketball, obviously, like I said, Monday with MLK Day. But, Sammy, we were just talking about that weekend that you're going to take some time for uh, St. Patrick's Day. Absolutely, because that's tournament weekend. So I'll, I love that. I'll probably throw it on at some point. Like mid mid afternoon sports for me, obviously because you know at three o'clock in the you know my day is yeah, not necessarily done, dead. but like I'm not in the office and stuff. I have time where I can do that, so I'll probably throw on the game. It's why I like watching. It's why I like European soccer, Champions League's amazing. It's at like it's on like two o'clock on a Wednesday afternoon, and I'm not really. I mean, if I'm like sitting at my office, sitting in the office working or something like that, got the TV on the background, the soccer's on the background, or I'm watching it. It's 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 fantastic. But I love this. This is the best part about this entire thing. The twelve and thirty-five Detroit Pistons are yeah. playing. Are playing the twenty and twenty-four Chicago Bulls. We are really sending our best over to Paris. Watch this, folks. Have when the schedule one. was made, it was great on paper, right? Man. No, Pistons the Pistons have always Bulls the Pistons in Paris. have been bad for a while. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. That's. Uh, I don't know how they landed on those two teams. Wait, to your is point, Michael Sam. Jordan? They said no, Michael Jordan. No, you will not have him. You, but anyway, I'm with you, Sam. I'm, I'm doing an afternoon show today, but I have the television in the studio. I'll probably have it on. It's just weird. It's like that week uh, between Christmas and New Year's when all those bowl games are on. It's a Tuesday afternoon, and there's a bowl game on television. You know, It's just strange, but I like it. But Sorry about the uh, Bulls and Pistons, our friends over there in France. Not the, best, not the best example of NBA basketball, I don't think, this afternoon. But will they really know? Because are they really tuned in to this like we are over here? Yeah. There, it's just... Yeah. Yeah. For them, is it an exhibition or is it just like, mm. oh my gosh, it is a big game that's going to count towards championship or lack thereof, and are they in the weeds like we are with this stuff? Well, international basketball is definitely growing, and more players from the international leagues are coming to the NBA. Um, so I don't know. I don't think they look at it as an exhibition. I think they just look at it as an opportunity to see American basketball you know, in, in person. Star power, you know, eh, maybe not that much with it's those two bull, teams. I think it's the Bulls. Like, the Bulls are... Zach Levine, I mean, does he star no, power I enough? I, just honestly, the Bulls brand. Like, yeah, when, the I Bulls was in, brand. when I was in France yeah. last summer, like, I saw a bunch of just the random brand. American yeah. sports jerseys, and a lot of them were, were Bulls ones. And, too, I mean, there's, like, a bunch of French... I was going to say exports. There's lots of French players that are coming yeah. in to the States. This kid, Victor Webinyama, is like heralded yes. as the next biggest thing, better than LeBron. So people mm-hmm. like their basketball in France. I really mm-hmm. think it's it's like the, it's the Michael Jordan, like Chicago Bulls thing. Because I would say, yeah, probably. I, I would honestly say, like, when you go places, the, the stuff that you see the most are like Michael Jordan, like, you see, like, the New York Yankees hats. Boston Red Sox hats, Kobe jerseys, a Kobe Lakers jersey, stuff. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. a Kobe jersey, and like and like Chicago Bulls stuff. I see, I see that quite quite a bit. Internet, like not internationally, like or like on TV. If you see people not from America, like what they like to wear when they wear sports figures and stuff like that, it's a lot of that. But now it's starting to get, you know, you get those M and M's jackets, and you get some of the some of the NASCAR stuff is becoming more popular again too. What you're seeing some of these people wear. Saw it two weeks ago, the Bears' last game of the season. I forget the player, but he walked into the media room and he was wearing. The M and M's jacket, like the Kyle Busch M and M's jacket, which is a collector's item now. Obviously. It's a collector's item, and they asked him about it. God, I can't remember who it was. It escapes me. But he said, "I understand NASCAR is going to be racing in Chicago, so I'm here to support it." So that was kind of cool. So there you go. I don't know where you got that from. To your point, Sam, but like Mike, those are collectors. I told you, there's a guy that sits behind home plate at White Sox games, and he wears that bright yellow M and M's jacket. I don't know who he is, but he's there all the time. Big Russell Kyle. Westbrook has come strolling yeah. in. Russell well, in the brown M and M's coat. That was years ago. Yeah, he did. Um, Russell Westbrook. Yep. Yeah. Hey, I'll take it. Well, I, get attention I, elsewhere. I love they're it. All, they're all over TikTok, aren't they, Davey? Aren't those jackets all over TikTok? Sure. <laughs> I don't use. Them. I don't want to be I've the never foremost seen one authority on, on that app. <laughs> you, Davey, you definitely <laughs> are the foremost authority on the. App. You are. Okay, oh, you totally of, are. Out of us four, sure, but yeah. that's kind of by default, I guess. Well, I saw there was a TikTok radio again. We've got that. I think it's Channel Four for SiriusXM. So I don't know what trainer. that is. Good morning. Is, it, is, is that what that is? Just songs from TikTok? Is that Basically, all it is? Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Check that out, Baggy. When you're driving around there, songs from TikTok, Channel Four. <laughs> I'll have to do that. I Number didn't know that was four. even there. Doing it's it for Harvey. Kevin. They're doing it for Kevin. You know, Forever. Kevin's a big, you know, yeah. Kevin, it's a he's swan a big song. TikTok. Yeah, Kevin's a big TikTok guy, so they figure they would honor TikTok, him that TikTok, TikTok, it's his final year. All right. Settle down. <laughs> <laughs> oh All right. Thank you. <laughs> what else we got?
Anybody, mm. anybody, anybody else have anything here? No. Weather? What's the weather? We've got uh, we had a lot of rain last night, a little ice. Supposed to be in the 30s here. Nothing major in Chicago. What's happening in D.C. It's, and it's uh, warm. Charlotte? It's warm here. Oh, you said it was 70 yesterday, didn't you? Did you say it got uh, that well, warm? Well, it, it got close there. It's 61 out here right now. Okay. And I'll take it. Here, here's the problem. I walked into the hotel last night, and all hell broke loose. What do you mean? And, and well, first of all, Tell there's what this some... walk in the door? Convention. <laughs> hey, hey. There's this convention where... You know, Monday, Tuesday, the hotel was nice and quiet. There's nobody in there. And then last night, people from around the world, right? We had we had somebody from Perth, Australia. Really? We had people from the UK. It's something going on. Well, they all decided to check in at the same time. Mm-hmm. Created a lot of, you know. Bedlam. The bedlam, chaos. But they've yet to adjust the the thermostat in the lobby from the cold weather from Sunday. I walked in the hotel, and it's like, we need to take about 22 logs off the fire here, people. That warm, huh? Hotter than 49 heads. Well, when you're from like, down oh. under, you got to keep it nice and warm there. Well, they, can, another... they, they have coats. They'll, they'll, they'll be fine. Got some jackets. Let's turn another... some air on. Let's <laughs> get some AC on in this lobby. Another shrimp on the bag, man. Pert makes great shampoo. That's what I heard, too. I actually Pick... used to use Pert way back in the day. <laughs> so did I, actually. I did. My parents did, too. Who knew it took so long to get here? That's, now I know why. It's a long trip. Well, that's what happened. Well, okay, yeah. Your Perths and your Perts. And, Correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And good morning, Daniel that. Ricardo from Perth. Well, that's how my relatives would say Perth. Pert. Yeah, they went down to Pert. PD. With their sandwiches. With their sandwiches. With their cameras. Right. We PD, made, we made PD Billy, Johnny, Nabodius. We, we didn't know what to do for dinner last night, and we made just, we did like fancy turkey breast sandwiches with some nice sourdough bread, oh. melted some cheese, a little bacon, some nice uh, butter lettuce on there, a little red onion, a little sriracha mayo. Got to say. That's nice. Yeah, you know, sometimes you're just in the mood for a good sandwich. You know what I mean? And like, oh, yeah. I was feeling that yesterday. Isn't butter lettuce just the biggest oxymoron out there? Well, I mean, yeah, because no? butter's not healthy and lettuce well, is healthy. Right. Oh, oh, is that should be okay? Yeah. I was say, oh, okay. Wait, I understand that butter I lettuce guess. is still lettuce, but you know, in the name. Well, wow, did you see in her? The name. I, I in did. The name. I did see her butter lettuce like that. Is that what you mean? No, no. Oh God. Oh well, God. Why I supported a NASCAR sponsor for dinner last night. Oh, where'd you go? Where'd you go? Cheddar's Scratch Kitchen. Did you get the oh. Kyle Busch meal. Did you- I love. They don't have it yet. I <laughs> That's love right, the Kyle Busch meal. Yeah, I. They don't have it yet. Get I love. Croissants? I love those croissants. Those That's what we were greeted with. Cheesies. Man came over to the table. No, no. Cheesies. No. I thought they were cheese filled for some reason. No. no. What am I thinking no. of? No. They're just regular oh. croissants with this ice glaze over top. Oh, okay. I guess I'm thinking of those cheese biscuits at Red Lobster. That's what I was thinking of. Sorry. How in the world can you get Red Lobster and Cheddar's tangled up? What? Because because I don't think I've been to either in a very long time, so it's been a while. Sorry, just you know, don't not top of mind, but okay. I don't think I have any cheddars around here. Quite honestly, I don't think I do. Started with the baked potato soup. I love the baked potato soup. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm telling you, it. You love a soup to start. He I does. Love, soup. love a soup to start. I, I love be, soup. <laughs> I could be standing at the gates of hell, and I will order a bowl of soup. I, it because people are like, well, it's, it's too hot. I to have soup. The soup. I don't spacho. like cold soup. It's right. got to be hot soup. I like it. So I had a nice bowl of soup, <laughs> and then I had the half rack of ribs and shrimp combo. Holy cow. And let me just tell you something. Son. Those ribs Governor fell called. off the bone, and there was not a shred of meat left. I damn near sucked the marrow out of the bones. They were that good. Oh, son. Oh, ho, oh, ho. Oh. Get, yes, get, get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. Talk to me, Baggy. Yes, son. So anyway, we, uh, we, we supported a NASCAR sponsor last oh, week. Oh, boy. Well, that's good. That's good. Is that the establishment there where you, I, and some other people dined one time and got a little bit loud at the table? Do you know what I'm talking about? Um, you have to narrow that down? Uh, it was a steakhouse of some sort, remember? Uh, there was a family next to us of children, and we... Oh, that's up by... That's off Bruton Smith Boulevard. That's okay. way, way, way far away. Texas Land and Cattle is where we were that That's night. exactly right. Is that yes. uptown or downtown? <laughs> <laughs> that's not that's Concord. That's the Concord Metropolis. <laughs> oh, it's the a Metropolis. Metroplex. <laughs> Bustling, I've heard. 
<laughs> Coming up, bottom of the hour, got headline check number one. Coming up at 8.30 Eastern this morning, some news came down the line. We'll go into detail in it um, in further detail here in a minute. But uh, there's been some, some management moves, some position movements inside of the competition department of uh, NASCAR. And Elton Sawyer is now the new senior VP of competition. Elton will join us this morning at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Jeff Gordon, you know, the vice chairman of Hendrick Motorsports, you know, the NASCAR Hall of Famer, Daytona 500 champion, that Jeff Gordon, he actually is going to swing by the studio and join us in studio for a prolonged period of time. So we're going to sit down and chat with Jeff, get caught up with Jeff, got that coming up. Uh, 10 o'clock this morning, 10 Eastern, we'll visit with Sam Hunt, the owner of Sam Hunt Racing. We'll take your telephone calls this morning at 866-BITLAND. And we'll also take your tweets at SiriusXM NASCAR, hashtag TMD NASCAR.